also know that progress in the most impoverished parts of our world enriches us all. So the United States will join with our allies to eradicate such extreme poverty in the next two decades by connecting more people to the global economy, by empowering women, by giving our young and brightest minds new opportunities to serve, and helping communities to feed, empower, and educate themselves. by saving the world's children from preventable deaths. That's how we'll confront the challenges of our time. Ladies and gentlemen, take your seats. Our talk begins. Hi there, my name is Rickin Gandhi. I work at Digital Green. It's great to be here with you. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, so, let me just start up. Perfect. So, imagine you're an agricultural extension worker tasked with training farmers on a new agricultural practice or technology. Communities are, are large and diverse. Uh, farms are remote and difficult to navigate. Even in a country like India with over 100,000 extension agents, or Ethiopia with over 60,000, it still is a daunting challenge. There is also the issue of motivation, both for farmers to trust an extension agent coming in from the outside, as well as for extension agents toiling out in the sun and finding that in India, less than 2% of farmers actually get their information from an extension worker. Contrast that with farmers, about 12% of Indian farmers, who report that they get information from their peers, with their neighboring farmers or their fellow family members about what crops they grew and how they grew them. So at Digital Green, uh, at Digital Green, we partner with NGO, government, and commercial extension systems that are already working with farming communities and are training them through farmer field schools, demonstration plots, and other means. We then train individuals amongst the communities that they work with to produce short eight to ten minute videos that are by farmers, for farmers, and by farmers to exchange agricultural practices that can boost their productivity and increase their nutrition security. About 2,900 of these videos have been produced so far in 20 different languages. And the main emphasis of these videos is really featuring that voice of a local farmer who is able to share in her own words her experience of adopting a new practice and the benefits that she received. Because before people are inquisitive about the economics of a particular practice, the first question that people ask is rather, what is the name of the person in the video and which village is he or she from, really to relate with the individuals that they're watching in these, in these programs. Now, once these videos are produced, these videos are screened offline using a battery-operated mobile projector by a facilitator in each village who essentially uses these videos among small groups of farmers, mostly women self-help groups, who are already engaged in some microcredit-related activities. And where every week these individuals are watching one new program and where the role of the facilitator is not just to have this video passively screened, but to rather engage the community in a discussion by pausing, rewinding, asking questions, getting feedback as these videos are being screened. What's in, what's, what happens by these frontline workers screening these videos is that at one level, you're increasing their efficiency. You're taking a one-to-one -one demonstration and now being able to share it with many. And at the same time, you're also in, increasing the quality of that extension intervention because now that consistency of that mes message is better ensured by this video being exchanged across a wider cross-section of community members and by the fact that the first recipient of these videos is not the farmers, but rather these frontline facilitators who are screening these videos. So that's the first beneficiaries of this program. Now as these videos are being screen screened, these frontline facilitators are also recording data about which individuals are watching what videos, the questions that they ask, what they like, what they don't like, what else they want to see. 
And this data and this feedback that is captured as these videos are being screened and also subsequently to follow up with the farmers as they actually adopt these practices to be able to see how do these videos actually get utilized by farmers on their own fields is used to inform the production and distribution of the next set of videos in an iterative cycle where these community members are essentially entering into this learning cycle with their extension workers as these videos are being produced and distributed on a weekly basis. Now, over the last uh, eight years that we've been working at, at Digital Green, we've assembled this large library of videos and have shared it across a community of about 150,000 farmers that are watching these videos every week. And what this has allowed us to do is to build out a online, offline courseware that is based on this content that is coming from these communities themselves that is based not just on videos, but also on audio and other textual material as well, and that is used to train these frontline workers in the first place. And we're potentially also looking to see how the, this content can be used not just for training these frontline extension workers, but potentially could also certify them because they represent the core of any extension system. In addition, we're also trying to see how we can build a Facebook community of the farmers that we're working with. We built a platform that is called Farmer Book, where you can see for each individual farmer that we're working with, the history of the individual practices that each farmer has watched, the questions that they've had, the practices that they've adopted. And this tool is utilized at the community level to allow the farmers themselves, as well as these frontline extension workers, to be able to reflect and think about the practices that they've practiced by themselves, as well as those of their peers within perhaps their proximate communities. Now, as we've been also expanding the digital green system, we're at one level been seeing ourselves as a tool to be able to magnify the efficiency of an existing extension system. But increasingly, have also been also interested in trying to make sure that this platform is utilized for positive behavior change communication. And to that end, we've partnered with a number of Feed the Future initiatives, like the Serial Systems Initiative for South Africa, uh, for, for South Asia, as well as, uh, which CISA, as well as uh, strengthening partnerships, uh, re uh, results, and innovations in nutrition globally, SPRING, uh, which, which both contribute a lot of technical input into our content development process. In the case of CISA, they're sharing practices around grain production in the Indo-Gangetic Plains uh, that is very useful for a lot of the communities that we work with in northern India. And in the case of spring, they're sharing practices related to key nutrition behaviors that link with the agricultural practices that we're sharing. Now, it's not just about taking the technical input from these agencies and using sort of our platform to be able to distribute this content more widely. It's also about taking that data and that feedback that we capture as these videos are being screened amongst these village communities and being using them to inform the next set of research agendas or technical interventions that these agencies and these initiatives are involved in. Now, at Digital Green, we're currently working in about 2,000 villages uh, with about 150,000 farmers across seven states in India and parts of Ethiopia, Ghana, and Tanzania. And we're in the midst of scaling to about 10,000 villages to engage a million farmers in India in collaboration with the country's Ministry of Rural Development. We're also scaling in Ethiopia to reach out to about 150,000 farmers working with the Ministry of Agriculture in that country over the next two years. Represented here in the room with other Feed the Future initiatives, we're very excited to be collaborating with groups like AGRA, as well as the World Cocoa Foundation. But this scale that we're able to sort of realize and, and be able to also demonstrate sort of the, the impact of our work, both in terms of gains of efficiency, we've been able to see how we've been able to take the adoption rates that on average for a number of our extension partners can range between 10 to 15 percent for a particular farmer field school or demonstration plot type of activity and enhance those uh, adoptions to about over 40 percent with this complementarity of this video-based approach, driving down the cost of extension services, which often can cost $35 per practice that a farmer takes up 
and taking that to about three and a half dollars, a tenfold increase just using this video-based approach and also trying to see how this, this content is also contributing positively in terms of gains in productivity for these communities by bringing together these technical organizations and research institutions that are able to both contribute information as well as be able to reflect on this grassroots level usage data and feedback to inform their own activities. Essentially, our main learning has been that technology is really not alone going to be able to close the gap of food and nutrition security. Technology is really only good at magnifying human intent and capability. What we found success is by partnering technology with existing extension systems that are already working with farming communities and seeing how technology can improve the efficiency of the work that they're already involved with and broaden the participation of the communities that they're engaged with. That's when video, for instance, can spark the curiosity of farmers to take their one small step to learn and to improve their lives and those around them. Thank you very much.